In this video, we're going to talk about the DP hypothesis. And the DP hypothesis states that NPs are complements of determiners in determiner phrases. So before we had this idea that determiners were the specifiers of noun phrases, uh, but we're reevaluating that. We're saying no. Actually, the determiner phrase contains a noun phrase. Determiners are the heads of noun phrases and nouns are the heads of determiner phrases. Determiners will no longer be specifiers of noun phrases. Now, for the linguistic argumentation of why this occurs, that's not my goal of this video. There has been debate, a lot of debate. It's generally accepted now. There's DPs. Some people are against DPs. Uh, for your interest in tax course, which is what this video series is aimed for, my goal is to show you how to draw the trees to impress your instructors, make sure you're on the right track for drawing these trees, uh, make sure you have a good idea of constituency. So my goal is to show you what the DP hypothesis is used for, as well as how to use it. Okay, so with this, an old structure like a man can still be done in the DP hypothesis. So it still has the same word order, except we now have two more spots for words for constituents and the question is well what goes in there well before we talk about that let's just show you one more example of how this looks so the old dog we've done something very similar and the important thing here to note is that well, dps they have bar levels too so the is the head of a determiner and the noun phrase is the complement so it's the sister of a d daughter of a d bar and then everything else works just the same way as before Again, let's remember that this triangle, which I'm going to start using more frequently now, just means that everything below it, um, all the structure below it, we're just kind of ignoring it. So in this case, we could have written A, P, A bar to A, but it's a little bit, you know, it's a lot to write. So we just abbreviate it with the triangle. Okay. So again, what we notice here is that there's still two positions left. There's this position for the specifier of NP and the position for the specifier of DP. So what's what's going on here? Well, possession is going on here. I've been avoiding possession structure because I don't want to introduce a possessive structure when I'm just going to reevaluate it in two hours into the series. Okay, so let's say we want to write something like John's car. Well, now we can do it. So actually, this possessive S is the head of a determiner phrase. And we think of this as the specifier of the DP is the possessor, while the complement of the DP or the D is the possessed. So John is gonna be the specifier of the DP, which is another DP in itself. And the car is the noun phrase. That is the complement of the determiner head. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do the dog's collar. So when we do our possession structure, we're actually gonna set things up a little bit more than we normally would. So we have this base structure and I'm gonna draw this base structure. So this apostrophe S is going under D and then we can fill out the rest. So for instance, uh, the dog is the DP and the specifier of the DP. It is the thing or it is the possessor, so the dog is the owner of the collar. Okay, so what does the dog look like under this? Well, there is no specifier of this DP. This D bar, the head of the D, is just the. And then now the noun phrases are complements of determiners. So dog is the complement of the. And this just goes down to an N bar and N for dog. We now have this apostrophe S as our possessive S. And then the thing being possessed, the caller, is now the noun phrase. So we have caller here. So this could be the dog's caller. And if you haven't noticed yet, which you may have, we could have another specifier here, right? We could, let's imagine that we want to say the owner's dog's collar. Well, we can do that again, right? So this is now the owner's 
dog's collar. Okay, in this case, we now have another possessive S beside this dog. And we can just do the same thing. D, D is the, and then NP, well, the owner is the head of the noun phrase. So this would be the owner's dog's collar. So this is a nice way we can use the DP hypothesis because the question is, what will we have to do before? What will we have to have done before in our old theory in order to make this work? It wouldn't be very pretty because essentially we also want to make sure that with constituents that we can do replacement tests like the owner's dog's collar. We could say that dog's collar, right? We could say that dog's collar and that is a determiner so that would be a good replacement. We replace this whole thing with just that. We'd have to get rid of this as well. So that dog's collar, um, as well as a couple other tests. But of course, the other great thing about this is that we can take really long DPs as well. So the man in the boat's hat, like, look, within this DP, there's a determiner here, there's a determiner here, there's a whole adjunct here. There's a lot going on, but somehow we can still do this possessive S after this whole noun phrase, after this whole giant determiner phrase. So let's set up our basic uh, constituent structure here, our tree structure here. D bar, D, this is the possessive S. Finally, the NP, okay, quickly, hat. That's the thing being possessed. Let's just fill this out fast. This is hat, so something's hat. The man in the boats. Okay, so the man, again, you know, this is just determiner head with a NP complement. So the man in the boat. In the boat is an adjunct. It is a description of the man. So let's not forget our bar levels here. We still have to do bar levels. And of course, this is the man here. And then in the boat. So in the boat, um, in is the head of the prepositional phrase, the boat. Uh, once again, we're not using NPs anymore, are we? No, these are DPs. So there's a DP as a complement of the preposition here. So the man in the boat. And once again, it's a D bar down to D, which is the, which takes an NP as a complement, which is boat. I drew a little bit too big for the bottom of the page. Hopefully that is legible. But again, this is our hypothesis now. We can now do possessive construction and everything else is pretty much the same as before. Um, in fact, if you get into more advanced syntax and you learn some movement, which we'll be doing later, just not quite with NPs and DPs, um, you will also sometimes make use of spec NP. Uh, but for now, this is a good introduction to what the DP hypothesis can do for us, um, as well as some of the nice possessive structure you can get from it. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.